soft and warm up and get your hair combed because we want you to go to Vermont Christian Church uh, sometime uh, and she'll tell you exactly when. Our school, International Academy of Flint, ladies and gentlemen, we have open enrollment. We have our first term that we just completed. Our kids did our final exams. Our cameraman today, the distinguished, the highly regarded Paul Herring Jr., a senior at our school, uh, did very well in uh, your, your exams. Paul, can you nod either way? He's, he's <laughs> nodding vertically, but his eyes are moving horizontally. I, I'm a little worried, okay? <laughs> but that's great, Paul. And we're, we, When you make a decision about where you're going to school, my young friend, we want you to make sure this audience knows that because we're, we're going to follow your career with great care. All right, folks, if you want to enroll in our school, why don't you take a tour first? I love to give tours. I love to brag about our building. We do such good things for kids, such good things for kids. And uh, just give us a call, 600-5000, simplest phone number on the planet, 600 600- 5,000. Please call us and say, uh, I'd like to get a tour of your building. I'd like to maybe consider enrolling our child at your school. Or, uh, and we'd just love to, to re- develop a relationship with you. We're very honest and open, and I think the word today is transparent. Well, we sure are. We would just love you to come on by and see all that we do and why and why and why we do it. That's what's important, I think, to, to you and the educational future of your child. Okay, I think enough said about me. Uh, oh, listen, listen, if you got somebody that uh, may, might want to consider enrolling in our school, we have an open house on Thursday, January 12. You'll hear more about that in the future, but Thursday, just jot it down, Thursday, January 12, it'll be 6.30 in the evening at our school. We'll have some of our staff there, administrators, teachers, our kids, that's who you want to talk to is our kids. That's what it's all about is the kids. And you can talk to them as well, and we'll, again, we'll give you the tour and uh, be as hospitable as we can, but we're not going to tell you a story. We're not going to paint a picture, and then once you get there, that picture changes. What we say we do we do, and we want you to know that we're very consistent with that. And this morning, uh, Sister Carolyn, we had another another of neighborhood breakfast yes. for our community, for our local families, and for others that just happened to come by. Uh, they're designed for uh, maybe those that might be a little in need. And we uh, had a great breakfast this morning. In fact, Sister Peeler, some of your wonderful church yes, people were. were helping us today. And mm-hmm. God bless them. I tell you, uh, yes. they're so good. And we had another church there today as well. Um, and it was um, Victory Tabernacle. Probably within 200 yards of our school is Victory Tabernacle. Those folks were there as well. And we had a great um, little service, a little bit of a service for those that had breakfast, a, a blessing and a little history about Christmas. Mm-hmm. Very short, very short, but very uh, interesting and uh, very uh, committed as far as the people that did it. And we just appreciate that church. And next time we do this, we won't, we're going to have to take Christmas Eve off Saturday and and New Year's Eve off Saturday. But the first Saturday in January will begin again. I think that must be around the 7th, maybe 6th, 7th on a Saturday morning, 9.30. We open our doors to serve uh, the neighborhood and others and others. So if you'd like to come by for breakfast, we would absolutely love to have you there. Enough of that now, enough of that. Let's talk about our guests. We'll always uh, introduce ladies first. And we have on my right, ladies and gentlemen, Sister Beverly Peeler. And I know the church that she's from, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let her do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is just uh, uh, a a real stalwart in the church. And she's a part of the uh, uh, Diaconette uh, organization. And Sister Peeler, why don't I be quiet and let's talk to you about you, the church, and the major event that's happening today. So listen up, folks. You can get a great meal and wonderful fellowship today. Listen up. Here we go. All right, first of all, before we get started, let's call all believers to prayer. I appreciate that. Let's hold hands here in the audience. We're going to ask that wherever you are, if you can't close your eyes and join us, that you open your mind and open your heart so that you can be a part of this prayer. We're asking our gracious God, he who created us, he who is our redeemer, he who delivers us from all situations, he who provides for us in all that we need, We come to you today to honor you for all that you do for us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your caring. We thank you for your keeping. We thank you for your sharing and your showing the way. We ask that you bless everyone in this place. Everyone within the sound of my voice. Everyone who wish they could hear us but just do not have 
the capabilities of hearing right now. Dear Lord, we ask that you send your winds and you send your angels, that you touch every heart, mind, and so soul. So be it, Lord. Mm-hmm. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless us collectively and that you bless us individually. And dear Lord, we will always be mindful to not only thank you, but to give you all honor, all glory, and all praise in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Sister Peter. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Whenever we have a a spiritual person with us, we always ask uh, that individual to open this program in prayer. I think that's just the right thing to do, and this is the perfect station to do it. WFLT, the gospel station. Amen, amen, and amen, and tell us about your event. We are doing something that we've done in the past, but it's been a long time. We know that people are walking up and down the streets. Sometimes they're looking for a meal or they're looking for someone to talk to or they're looking for a place to warm up. About two months ago, the Diaconate Board of Vermont Christian Church, located at 1201 Lippincott Boulevard, came together and came up with an idea to minister to this community. What we decided we would do would, do, would be to do a dinner. We're calling our dinner Common Unity. Meaning that anybody at any point in life, at any stage in life, is invited to unify with us and be in fellowship, enjoy a meal today, beginning at 2 Mm o'clock, until the food runs out or until 6 p.m. We have been preparing in the beginning to feed 200 people. Well, as God multiplies every place else, he multiplied in us. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we're looking forward to feeding 300 plus people. Oh my. Mm -hmm. We're going to provide a traditional turkey and dressing dinner. It's going to be complemented with tossed salad, green beans, corn, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, rolls, butter, lemonade, and every dessert that Mama made in the kitchen. So we invite you to come on out. In addition, we have a member of our congregation who is a coupon extreme person. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. I know what that means. And that, what that means <laughs> yeah. is that she's got stuff. Still and more stuff. She got stuff and stuff. <laughs> okay. She has a stockpile of personal hygiene items. She's going to be giving away coolers. And they're, they're the cutest little things. I wish I'd stopped by and got one. For people who have newborn babies, there's coolers and formula for the newborn baby. She has shavers, coupons, toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap Mm -hmm. that we'll just have on a table that you can just come by and pick up. Our nurses ministry will provide information. Not everybody has the convenience of having health care insurance and ability to go and see a doctor. But sometimes if you have information provided for you, you're able to look at the information, Mm -hmm. look at your symptoms, and be able to know something about what's going on within your mm-hmm. body, within your person. We will have our elders and our pastor on hand who will use our sanctuary mm-hmm. as a prayer chapel so that people who have special mm-hmm. needs, special mm-hmm. desires can go into the, mm-hmm. the, the sanctuary, have prayer, rest, be one-on-one with somebody, and be one-on-one mm-hmm. with God. Mm-hmm. So you see, we're just kind of opening up our house, God's house. Mm-hmm. To not only the people within our community, but people who can get there, Mm -hmm. people who want to stop by, people who want to be in fellowship with people. At any point in your life, come as you are. Mm -hmm. It's a sit down. No, we don't have takeout plates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The purpose for that is so that we could sit down and be in fellowship with one another. You can't take out and be in fellowship. So we invite you to eat in. Mm We are so glad that God chose us Mm -hmm. to do this ministry. We are so proud that the people of Vermont, the congregation of Vermont... Is this your first one? This is... No, it's not our first one. one. This is our first one this year. This year. Yes. Has joined with us and supported us. As Art has said, what we're planning to do is we are going to do a dinner every fifth Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. Okay. The next fifth Saturday falls on March 31st. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we will do it all over again. 
to the glory of God. Okay. Okay. To work with this community. All right. And we thank you for well, the opportunity to share. Let's give an address now. Some folks may not know where Vermont is. Come Vermont on. Christian Church is a little church on the corner yeah. of Winans and Lippicott Boulevard. We're 10 blocks, about 10, 12 blocks, roughly west, west of, of Dort yeah. Highway. Mm -hmm. The phone number is 235-1182. The address is 1201 Lippicott Boulevard. We invite you to come. We welcome you. We ask that you be there. We're looking forward to seeing you. Okay. And you're going to see me now, I guarantee you. Thank In fact, you. is there going to be a line? We hope so. Okay. <laughs> Sister, Sister Carolyn, can you finish this program? I'm leaving now. Uh, I ain't going to fight the lines. <laughs> well, thank you. You did very well. Thank I'm you. so pl pleased to have you here, Sister Peeler. Audience, you heard it. Be there. Yeah. Come on, come on by. I'll, I'll, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. No question about it. I'm not sure when. I've got some Cub Scout activity at 1 o'clock. So Bring the Cub like Scouts. Me, oh. <laughs> okay. They're having their own little festivity today, but yes, we will. Thank you. Uh, did I hear a voice? Yes, you did. Okay. Would that be our on-the-spot reporter? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> on the spot, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello. Well, give somebody your name so we can hear you. This is Mary Sanders. And where are you today on the spot, reporter? Well, I'm back at Sears. I was at Barn and Nobles and Bar Louis. Oh, okay. And now, <laughs> Thank you, why are you moving around so much? What's happening? Who are you? What are you doing out there? Nobody knows anything about you yet. I'm ringing bells out here raising money for Christmas. For who? For children in need. <laughs> but what organization? Think hard. Salvation Army. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Took five <laughs> questions, but we got it out of her. <laughs> okay. Well, is it a good morning, if you know what I mean? Yes, it's a good morning, but it could be a better morning if I fill my bucket up. Okay. <laughs> I had a girl. I had a girl. Very good. How is the weather? It seemed like you, you suffered the other day, I'm sure, because it was so bitter. Yes, it rained all day the other day, but today I have a little sunshine, and it's probably about 35 degrees outside. Okay. And Other than that, I'm bundled, and I'm ready to go. Okay. Now, where, in case folks are listening and they come out to the mall today after they go to the Common Unity Dinner at, in, at uh, Vermont Christian church how will they uh how do they where do they locate you exactly what door i'm at the entry door uh entry seven right at uh sears okay and i have on a bright yellow coat you can't miss me all right <laughs> and you're going to say merry christmas to them when they pass by i know when you open doors and you're a very courteous lady i i've observed you you do well, an excellent yes, job and, and and I have some volunteers with me today. I have two uh, volunteers by the ages of 13 and 10. Okay. And they're giving out candy canes uh, for the people that donate. Really? Yes. Wow. And they're also giving out door service. Ma you you got a deal going, girl. You very <laughs> very creative. An audience that is listening, of course, this is Mary Sanders, our on-the-spot reporter. And uh, if you did look at a headline in the Flint Journal, the Salvation Army, according to last count, is around... $300,000 short of their goal. It was an ambitious goal, but the, ambitious as well is the great need in this community. So if you, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and of course dollars, it all counts. Drop it in, whether it's with our good sister Mary or somewhere else. The Army needs your assistance. I, I'm a happily and graciously a board member with the Salvation Army, so we certainly encourage you to do what you can to help not just the Salvation Army, but help your neighbors, because that's in essence what you are doing. So kindly, kindly do that. Mary Sanders, we have a very full agenda here. Could I say, uh, would you like to say something in closing, dear? Yes. It was a guy that came and gave me gloves because he noticed I didn't have on any gloves. Wow. Him and his wife are occasional uh, shoppers out here, and I just wanted to thank those guys. He took off his gloves and, and gave them right to me. That, isn't that sweet? Audience, yes, Flint is, is such a great place. Sister Carol, are you almost to tears, aren't you? And, and he so also sweet. gave me a donation. <laughs> All right, listen on the spot. We got a full program, and we're going to have to move along. But thank you so much for that, that very personal story of yours, as well as your encouragement for everybody to dig a little deeper in their pocket. Pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, dollars. Army will appreciate all of it. Mary Sanders, thank you so much. And your candy kid, candy, candy cane kids, tell them thank you very much, hon. Oh, thank you for having me. You betcha. Bye-bye now.
audience will probably do that next uh, Saturday as well. I think that'll be the last day that the Salvation Army rings. So wherever, wherever on the spot is, we'll, <laughs> we'll have her call in again. I hope you didn't mind that divergence from the program. But now we've got somebody from the International Academy of Flint, that outstanding school on South Saginaw Street, a distinguished, refined, and highly educated gentleman. Uh, really? Well, wait, I, I might have overshot a little bit. Uh, shooting here. What's your name, dude? <laughs> My name is Terry Evans. <laughs> and tell us about yourself, Terry, and all the services you provide for our school. He does a host of things, folks, so please listen up. Uh, this is my fourth year at International Academy. Uh, for the previous 20 years before that, I was in public education as a school administrator, athletic director. At IAF, I am the uh, educational development plan coordinator for students currently 8th through 10th grade right now as we continue to process up to their senior year. Also a teacher with some uh, computer classes. Okay. And then I'm also the athletic director. Athletic director. <laughs> but let's, let's stop up at the first one, that EDP. Uh, the, some parents may not know that you know, we are required to do that, and we do, you do, as well as Ms. Thomas does a great job with that. Maybe a little background on that, sir. Okay, EDP is, is something that's required through all the county schools here in Genesee County. Uh, with me being the coordinator, I oversee students as they progress through it. I'm the kind of guiding them through. Mm -hmm. As eighth graders, they select their whole career pathway all the way through college. Um, that may change as they mature. Yeah, I was just say, as they're not so locked every into year it. Yeah. they redo certain assessments within the program. Mm -hmm. It's an online program which I monitor. Uh, they learn how to set goals. Uh, Paul just did a I'll, I'll give toots here to Paul. Paul did a great job. Uh, we <coughs> took some kids over to uh, U of M Flint North North River Building and Paul talked about having visions and goals for that and these kids Great their job, vision Paul. is their nice career job. that they're choosing yeah. and my job is to let see them how they can reach that mm -hmm. vision and the goals they have to set and what uh, classes they take at mm -hmm. IAF so they do their whole high school schedule in eighth grade yeah coach now how how is a child determined what career path he or she might go to and there's an instrument why don't you yes. talk just uh, quickly about within that. the online program it's called career cruising it's it's used nationwide a lot of schools use it uh, at IAF I am the site manager of it in the Genesee County Schools it's the ISDs the manager mm -hmm. so I oversee our program they take what they what we call a uh, career matchmaker it's 116 questions that they answer. Mm -hmm. Eighth graders tend to, you know, Paul can write, they tend to not really answer them the way they should, but as they mature, they start seeing the benefits of it. So mm -hmm. those questions and what they check for their educational level, be mm -hmm. it uh, two-year degree, university degree, narrows down. So it puts them based on those questions in careers, maybe 30 or 40 careers mm -hmm. that suit mm -hmm. them. In 10th mm -hmm. grade, they will take another career matchmaker mm -hmm. same questions they answer of course differently because they're maturing now they also take take a my skills and my skills is skills that they're good at already and it even narrows it. so it mm -hmm. funnels them more and more it makes it tighter mm -hmm. so by time they leave if as seniors they will have to do an exit presentation they have to answer three questions in front of their peers board members parents who am i where am i going mm -hmm. and how am i going to get there okay and they do that's a, a life plan. plan. It's a, a life, life plan. plan. And now there's my another job life is plan to... that should be in there, and that's uh, where am I going? Not only on this earth, but somewhere yeah, else. That's right. Right. Okay, Sister mm -hmm. Peter. That's, so that's kind said. of a, yeah, that's that's fascinating. That's yeah, kind that's of great. The, the shell. So it's a great tool for parents because it also helps them with uh, FAFSA, college choices, scholarships. So okay. it's all there within this program. There so it's go. my job to move them through this process from eighth grade till they're seniors. Now we're doing something coming up in March, Terry. Talk a little bit about that so that we that'll be a part of this overall planning program. Yeah, I have uh, I have to do certain activities within the career cruising or the ISD mm -hmm. to meet certain expectations and with Art's help and with Miss Thomas's help who also is the the, the school counselor for ninth through twelve, mm -hmm. we're doing a career fair. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna bring in people who have careers to talk to our students and outside students about mm -hmm. what do they have to do mm -hmm. and what steps or goals they have to set in place mm -hmm. for this. Because a lot of times kids will say, I want to be a doctor, but I don't like science classes. <laughs> well, mismatch. There's a, yeah, yeah something's not quite right there. Yeah. Or I want to be an engineer, but I don't like math. So yeah. it's, we kind of tweak them to gear them toward what they want to mm -hmm. do. And with people coming in now, that's just an added 
caviar, yeah. so to speak, mm -hmm. to give them some input as to what they choose to yeah. do. And Sister Carolyn, you, I'd like your children to come to that because we're going to open it up to the to the community. Our kids, of course, will be there naturally. It's focused on them, but we're inviting all of the charter schools, eighth graders and up, and as well as uh, any public school child that would like to come, Southwestern Beecher where you, or uh, anybody, Linden Charter, where your child is. We will personally invite them for that because in eighth grade, if they're in a charter, they have to have that same beginning plan. So this might be able to help them as they proceed uh, with the development of their plan in their school. You'll hear more about that. You'll hear more about that. Well, Terry, that's an extremely critical part of, uh, of getting a child headed in the right direction. Uh, but you do a few other things. God bless you. Oh. And why don't you talk about some of the things that we did here last night in your athletic uh, uh, Athletic uh, director uh, role. We had a we, very we exciting a major game. game. Major game. Major yeah. game. We, uh, we're a small Class C school. We played a large Class A high school last night. Uh, very exciting. I wish we could have played a little bit better in the first half like we did in the second half. We ended up losing by five points, but with uh, two seconds left, we had a chance to tie it, hit the front of the rim on a three-pointer, uh, had to foul uh, one of their students, mm -hmm. uh, ended up losing. But I believe we're finally turning the corner. Yeah. If they Who'd just we play, Coach? Who'd we we played play? Flushing High School. Flushing, uh, folks. That's uh, big time. Uh, we, that's Class A. Class A. We predominantly play mostly Class A and Class B schools. Yeah. And we hung in there with them. And we hung in there tight with them. Yep, we did. Uh, very exciting. We had a good crowd. Had a lot of staff people there last night. Uh, people out in the community like to come watch. Uh, our first boys game isn't home until after the first of the year. Okay. Uh, okay. Then we'll be home. Girls playing. Girls are learning. We're very young. But the girls team, uh, boys team is really young too. It's, it's predominantly uh, sophomores, sophomores and juniors. And juniors. Okay. So we're pretty right. young. Well, audience, what we did last year, I think we'll do it again with the great help and assistance of Sister Carolyn. We're going to ask some questions, both biblical. We have we asked biblical questions, Sister Peeler. We asked questions about the people that are interviewing with us here on the Saturday morning. And we ask current event questions. And to the answerer of those questions, we give tickets to our basketball game. So uh, we will coordinate that, and maybe that will pique a little interest among the audience. We will be doing that as well. Um, Coach, uh, listen, we need to compliment one of uh, one of your beautiful wives, if you don't mind. And <laughs> one of my beautiful <laughs> wives. That could really get me in trouble here. Mm. And, and t uh, tell us, uh, Coach, where, where you go to church, because I've been there uh, as well on some of your special events, and uh, the great gift that your ch uh, your wife has, and also her gift in the gardens. You might talk about that. As yes, well, uh, I attend Mayfair Bible Church. Um, that's they on do, Pearson. That's on Pearson Road. Yeah. Uh, but I just like to take time out for what, what our does in the community, what you heard the sister over here talked about. And, you know, if we come together and quit worrying about color mm -hmm. and just look at what's inside a person, mm -hmm. we could do a lot for the city. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, that's right. I yeah, apologize. That, that's quite all right. That's an emotional issue with you. I sense that very much so, mm -hmm. sir. And, of course, that's what I believe as well. And that's right. You're probably right there with me, too, aren't you, <laughs> Sister Peter? I, I okay. sure am. The one we got to worry about is Sister uh, Carolyn there. I'm not so sure about her. <laughs> but you want me to talk about one of my wives? <laughs> yeah, would you? One of my wives there? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love her. Oh, don't uh, tell her husband, though. <laughs> my wife is a very unique person. She is a, a, a beautiful singer. Uh, however, she sings tenor. She has a very... Uh, deep, powerful, emotional voice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, probably should have been a professional singer. Mm -hmm. uh, she sings from her heart. She sings for the Lord. Right. Uh, she also does things. I know this summer she's come out to the school oh, with landscaping and pulling weeds. And, and her marigolds uh, won't die. They're yeah, still blooming. They're still blooming. So <laughs> well, it's not um, quite. <laughs> she's but really, were close. Right. And she's really enjoyed giving back to the school area and that community. And uh, it's just a small part of what we want to do back okay. for the community. I mean, I was raised and born in Flint, uh, was a product of the Flint schools. Uh, so I. I I'm not down on Flint. I think mm -hmm. Flint, if, if all of us work together, and I know that's what Arts tried, and Sister, that's what you're trying to do with your church, and I think Mayfair tries doing the same thing with mm -hmm. coming down and doing a service in the jail during Thanksgiving time and Beautiful. feeding the prisoners. Uh, we all just got to work together. Yeah, That's right. And that's my it. wife loves to sing, and yeah. if anyone out there wants her to come sing at your church, 
Yeah, I'll put a plug in for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Can we mention the A N N I V E R S A R Y thing? Oh, well, I guess you can. <laughs> Tomorrow is our 35th anniversary, wedding anniversary. I spelled anniversary. Awesome. I hope I did it properly. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Isn't that great? Beautiful. Okay, yes. very good. Well, thank you. I've only had one or two with you folks, so. Yeah. I'd like 35 more yeah. as well. <laughs> okay, they're going to adopt me, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Sister Karen, how are we doing on time, my dear? Absolutely. You have two and a half minutes. Oh, we we got a lot of time. Yeah, let's let's talk time. about aluminum siding. Let's do that. Over at Vermont. Well, let's give a plug. We always have some closing remarks, sister. So why don't you give us a little close regarding your event and anything you'd like to say about your congregation or yourself or your pastor, good old Pastor Jonathan Graves, who... Uh, is uh, cooperating in our breakfast program. So yes. take it away. First of all, let me say thank you, Eric. Indeed. Such a pleasure. And I want to remind you that it's at Vermont Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. We're located at 1201 Lippincott Boulevard, r about half mile, 10 blocks west of Dort Highway. Yep. The dinner begins at 2 p.m., it will last until 6 p.m. or until the food runs out. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to feeding 300 people. Well, that's Please wonderful. be in the number. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. We praise yep. God for his blessings of abundance. We praise God for you. And we invite you to mm -hmm. be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank Sister Roseanne Jones. Oh, have to. Who gave me a call this morning. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And as a saint and a servant, it's always be ye ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. With the help of my husband and my daughter who took care of the other 10 obligations I had. Oh, so thank you, Roseanne, okay. and thank you for this opportunity. And I have to bless Roseanne, too, if I could. She's such yes. a wonderful lady, works in our, uh, at our school. And without her, there'd be no breakfast program That's or right. no Thanksgiving dinner. That's in my right. Bed. So, Rose, if you <laughs> listen, right. Bubba loves you. Bubba loves you. <laughs> but also, don't tell your husband. Okay, thank you. And now, Terry, maybe you'd have a moment in closing here. What would you like to say? Same thing, Art. Thank okay. you for having me here. Our pleasure. Um, I had to close with uh, some of the audience men and all that. Uh, the Athletics IF is pretty much all fundraised. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're out there and you own a business and you'd like to be a corporate sponsor, please call me mm -hmm. at 600-5247 uh, or get a hold of Art. But uh, we have to fundraise over $35,000 to have athletics mm -hmm. at the school. Mm -hmm. uh, either mowing lawns or... Uh, Pizza kids. Thank you, or Paul Jr. Dress down Thank you. days. Okay. Or whatever I can think of for fundraisers okay. or coaches. Uh, but I know there's some of you out there who, who, who may be able to help either mm -hmm. by sponsoring. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have packages available for corporate sponsors as far as advertising, putting something on a uniform mm -hmm. where people will okay. see it. We so, can talk about that. Yeah. We'll have you back, Coach. Okay. Yes, we will. That'll be fine. Well, I'm getting the high sign from the highest sign in the world here. Sister Carolyn, thank you, Lord, for having us. To, I'll have a program today. We do appreciate the, the Lord allowing us to be here. And wherever you are, folks, if you look, if you're walking your dog, if you looking at somebody, if you driving your car, if you bouncing balls in Bermuda, look at somebody and say, woo that is some kind.